The following program is paid for by Jubilee Worship Center, Greensboro. Before the creation of the church, God created the family. And family time is so very important to us all. Welcome to A Time of Jubilee, a program designed to bring the Word of God to you and your family. Dr. Carolyn Lee has spent a lifetime studying God's Word, and she has a right now word for you. Join us now in a time of Jubilee. Hello, good to have you with us today for this program, Getting to Know Our God. We're going to be looking at the thought of how He issues to us a wake-up call. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't wake up easily. I like to wake up and think how many hours of sleep I've had because I value my sleep. And perhaps you do the same uh, because we really, we just would rather wake up on our own, you know, just when our body's ready to. But sometimes um, God is alerting us to something or we have an appointment hopefully an appointment with him first thing in the morning. But if we cannot first thing in the morning, at least sometime during the day to keep that appointment. So if um, so, when we begin to be spiritually disciplined by Holy Spirit, as we've been studying his boot camp training, and we've been looking at this now for three or four weeks, um, we realize that there's a different kind of waking up that he's calling us to. Isaiah 60 verse 1 in the message reads this way, get out of bed. <laughs> oh yeah, get out of bed, Jerusalem, wake up, put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole world is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness, but God rises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light, kings to your sunburst brightness. Look up, look around, watch as they gather, watch as they approach you. Your sons coming from distances, your daughters carried by their nannies. So what we hear is wake up because there's purpose. There are m mighty things to take place for God's kingdom. So in basic t military training, there's no sleeping in. Every day, the wake up call is at 5 a.m. At first, a lot of noise is made to awaken the soldiers and some will use bugles and play reveille in order to awaken the soldiers. But after a period of about four weeks, the drill instructor just simply enters the room and says, get up. Because hopefully, by then, the soldiers have been trained to alertness and trained in answering whatever the authority is saying to do. So uh, for some of us who <laughs> refuse to awaken, who just want to turn over and go back to sleep, so to speak, in life. Uh, Reveille sometimes will come in the form of adversity. You talk about a wake-up call. I have had my share of Reveille in life that has awakened me. And these are times and dates that I will never forget because they did awaken me and alert me. And uh, so in evaluating our human response, to awakening, we have to admit that we would, cho we would choose to be a little slow about it. And uh, <laughs> my mind and my body's not quite ready. And I'm sure you can relate to that too. Really, what it is, is we want to awaken when we so please. Isn't that the truth? Some of us can be a little grumpy if we've been motivated to get up and get at them before we're ready to. <laughs> okay, but in the disciplines of boot camp training, Holy Spirit trains us to listen simply to His nudges. Just a little nudge. His whispers, His promptings, even if it's during the night. Now, it's easy to mistake these middle of the night wake-ups as disturbances of the body. Now, I know that sometimes there are uh, 
<laughs> potty breaks, as we would call them. But we can also just be awakened and might not take too seriously that this might be Holy Spirit that's speaking to us because He wants us to be alert to Him. He wants to pray through us. He wants to reveal something to us. So we want to be sensitive to that. One of my very favorite quotes by C.S. Lewis is this, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks to us in our consciences, but He shouts to us in our pains. So when I read this over, and I have many, many times, because it really does resonate with me, I recognize there are three levels of waking up here that C.S. Lewis is speaking of. First of all, that's that sweet nudging. He whispers to us in our pleasures. He whispers, wake up. And then what do we choose to do? We want to hit the snooze alarm and go back to sleep. I mean, that's a natural response, okay? But we've been alerted to wake up. And if we do not wake up, then reveille, <laughs> which can be termed adversity, shouts loudly and demands our attention. So we see that there's purpose in as adversity. Peter issued a wake-up call in 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9 in the message. Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. You're not the only ones plunged into these hard times. It's the same with Christians all over the world. So keep a firm grip on the faith. The suffering won't last forever. It won't be long before this generous God who has great plans for us in Christ eternal and glorious plans they are, will have you put together on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. Oh, I love that translation. So do you hear those words where he said he, that the enemy loves to catch us napping? Oh, yes. Being drowsy, being lazy. So the moment you and I are born again, we have entered into the family of God and we've actually been enlisted into God's army, whether we <laughs> choose to or not, because the battle is on. In this life, l let me say this. I'm going to use a term from, we heard it first, at least I heard it first, back in the uh, Vietnam era. But in, in this life, there are no conscientious observ um, objectors. Conscientious objectors. Who are they? They're the ones who refuse to bear arms or to participate in military service. Uh, one who refuses to fight or enter into conflict. Now, let me say this, just so that you don't think I'm being uh, picking on anybody. There are some noble decisions that people have made to not enter into the military forces. And so I'm not, a, I'm not addressing that. What I'm speaking of is that there's no room for passivity in the Christian life. There's no, no room for us to say, I don't want to fight. I don't want to battle because we are in a war. So we're going to have to learn how to do so. The enemy is real. And Peter describes the enemy and how to resist him for he is really out to destroy. The enemy is out to destroy, not Peter. <laughs> There's a posture that we are to take, though, and this is what really boggles our minds sometimes. Um, in our spiritual walk, in 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7, in the NIV says, humble yourselves. Now, that doesn't sound very warlike, does it? But it's actually a very strategic warlike position to take. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due times. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That is the posture that we're to take. So the spiritual warring position to get into is to saturate ourselves in humility toward God and towards one another because the battle plan is laid. In God's kingdom... It's not our power, it's His. It's not our formulas, 
it's his word. It's not our wisdom, but his that wins the battle. In addition, we will not submit to authority if we have not postured ourselves in humility. We just simply won't do it. We will just say, I'm going to be one that's going to choose to go my own way. So as we wake up, we're to remember to wear humble ourselves before the commander in chief, our God, realizing that he knows all things. The road ahead, he knows the battles that we will face, and he has the wisdom to dispense to us if we will humble ourselves before him. Yes. So we've already seen and we know through experience that the war is real and it requires self-control. Yes, our character has to be sober. Sober. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16 in the message. So roll up your sleeves, get your head in the game, be totally ready to receive the gift that's coming when Jesus arrives. Don't lazily slip back into those old grooves of evil doing just what you feel like doing. You didn't know any better then. You do now. As obedient children, let yourselves be pulled into a way of life shaped by God's life, a life energetic and blazing with holiness. God said, I am holy. You be holy. So what we must remain thinking, our, our way of thinking should be, a soldier always remains on duty. A soldier always remains on duty. So 1 Peter 4, 7 in the message says, everything in the world is about to be wrapped up, so take nothing for granted. Stay wide awake in prayer. That's from the message translation. Peter admonishes us, us to be on alert, to be watchful, to be wide awake with our eyes open. Don't get drowsy. Arise, gear up with the Word of God, the full armor of God, because there are minds, there are minefields out there. And we never know when we're going to step on a mine, so to speak. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 in the ESV. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. So here are the marching orders. Resist the enemy. But how do we do it? First, submit yourselves therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you James 4 7 ESV so take note of the order in which they're listed we humble ourselves first then we resist the enemy and he will flee we must know whom we're dealing with who is our enemy he's our opponent the slanderer the accuser 1 Peter 5, 8, NIV, be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's sneaky and he's strong and he's subtle and he's direct and sometimes hard to spot. We're going to talk more about that in just a few moments. We're going to hear from our sponsor. We'll be right back. This is Pastor Carolyn Lee. I'm sitting here studying the Word of God and preparing for our next Healing Ministries Retreat. We have wonderful savory meals that are just so inviting and delicious. We have a good meeting place that can house up to 13 or 14 people at a time. I also have bedding. We have bedrooms where, for those who stay overnight that come for ministry. But the most important thing is that it is a safe place where the presence of God is here. And I just invite you to check out the, our website, HealingMinistriesGreensboro.org. Call our number at 336-272-9910. That's through our church office. They will take your information. I do hope you will come and join us. We'd love to have you. 
I'm glad you're back with us so we can continue to see what our marching orders are. Let me just repeat just a few words that I just said, how we are to resist the enemy. James 4, 7 in ESV says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So we're seeing, first of all, humble ourselves before God. Then we can resist the enemy. How many times have any of us, myself included, have tried to resist the enemy in a position of pride? Come in a way uh, a little battered <laughs> and a little bruised from, from, from the encounter. So we must remember who we're dealing with. He, is, uh, he has some strategies. He does. He's not greater than our God. But he can sure wreck some havoc in our lives. And he, he is our opponent. He is a slanderer. He is the accuser of the brethren. 1 Peter 5, 8, we were just looking at, be alert and sober-minded. Your enemy, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So let's look at the word prowling. Imagine him prowling about. What that is simply means is restless energy. He is restless, looking about, looking for opportunity at all times where he can get a foothold. He's looking for opportunities. He's stealth. It's, that might be a new word to some folks. It means he's acting undercover. He's intending not to draw attention. He's very subtle, but he's crafty. Okay, and he's hoping that you'll forget that he exists. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, he loves to mask up. He's got all kinds of sh masquerade um, garments, if you want to call it, or appearances that he has. And so he oftentimes will look like an angel of light. And so he's, easy, he's not easy to spot, and, but he works in the shadows. He loves darkness. So he wants us to keep things secretive because he loves to walk, work in those dark places. So I'm going to use a word now. Let me just put a disclaimer in here. I'm not trying to be political, but I'm going to use a term called fake news. And I'm not borrowing that from any political <laughs> a candidate here. What I'm trying to speak of is fake news that forms right up here. And I'm going to tell you, we are good movie producers. We can produce the best fake news right up here. Sometimes we don't even need an enemy. <laughs> we can do it to ourselves. But you know what? He'll play on it. He sure will. He'll add the color. He'll add the panavision to what it is that we start thinking up here. We can immediately think of rejection or think of some type of lie that he has said to us. Next thing you know, we got a, we got a file drawer full of, of what we call evidence to prove that it's true when it's really based on a lie. It's called fake news. All right, I'm talking about the fake mental news. Okay, so um, the enemy will use it even if it's our own thought that's forming in our mind. So um, some of us, not some of us, but some people have, and I've heard this to be true, some people have passed lie detector tests based on what they presumed that they had witnessed. My husband had an occasion like this in his place of employment long before we started our church. This is decades ago now, where someone had looked out a window and saw a man uh, that was working for the company put some money in his pocket. And uh, so this woman thought that he was <laughs> taking the company's money. And so she reported him. Well, what he was doing was he did put the money in his pocket, but he then came back in the office and recorded what all had been taken in. And he kept very good records of such. But when she was given a lie detector test, she passed it because what she perceived by what she saw was that she thought that he was a crook, that he was stealing from the company. And so what I'm saying is that was all based on a lie and, and, and of course, he, nothing ever happened to him because he had records to prove that he was innocent. So I'm just saying that we can see something through or experience something through our senses 
A lie can be formed in our mind, and before you know it, the fake news is playing in our head, and we've got a case going against someone or thinking a situation is a whole lot worse than it is. When I counsel with people, I will um, say, well, okay, I'm hearing what's concerning you. Tell me what you can prove to be fact, and what is it that you are perceiving to be true? And it stops people and makes them think, hmm, well, it would seem that such and such is true, but I can't say it's a fact. But you, you see, we have to rightfully divide these things. So we want to <laughs> rid ourselves of the fake news that we're giving ourselves in the case that we're building and how we're expanding something to be a mountain that's actually a molehill. Or it may not even, it may just be a greasy spot. It may not be anything at all. It's just could be imagined. So we're good at it. Remember, God has given us an imagination. But it's for us to be creative for the kingdom of God, not creative for the enemy's kingdom. Okay? So, the scripture we were just reading from 1 Peter 5, 8 speaks of how he roars about like a lion. Now, roaring appears fierce. It stirs up fear and panic within us. And it has a planned activity behind it. You can, you can be assured of that. The enemy has strategies. And so his roaring is intended to communicate and cause fear and to cause us to be paralyzed right where we are and we can't move forward in the Lord. So we're, we stand back and we're aghast because it seems so fearsome when it may not really be, but he's roaring and making a lot of turbulence and making a lot of noise and he's just saying, mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what this means? This is going to be your, your doom. This is going to be the end of you. Or this is going to be a, a terrible situation. When in fact, God says, why don't you come to me? Ask me what I think. Have you ever stopped to do that? Just ask him. Ask him, Lord, what do you say about this? Well, I can tell you, first of all, he doesn't have any hives. He doesn't fret. He doesn't have any anxiety. He knows all things. The end from the beginning. And he also knows the way of escape. So why don't we ask the one that will give us the true news and build our lives on that rather than allowing the enemy to create a movie or produce a movie in our minds. Okay. Because he's out to kill, steal, and to destroy. Let's don't forget that. John 8, 44 in the message reads, He was a killer from the very start. He couldn't stand the truth because there wasn't a shred of truth in him. When the liar speaks, he makes it up out of his lying nature and fills the world with lies. That's his M.O. So let's don't forget that. Don't be shocked. Don't be shocked when he lies. He doesn't know anything else but that. So, you and I have been called to be awake. That means to be level-headed, to be balanced in our thinking. So how do I balance my thinking? Well, I can't depend upon my own way of thinking. I have to come to the Word of God. What are the promises to me? That's the balancing scale. That'll balance your life out. Because we're going to hear some fearsome things. We're going to see some things that are, are disturbing in this life. They're, they're plentiful. I mean, you don't have to go very far to hear something negative. I mean, we, we can serve it up to ourselves. But if, if we're not doing it, somebody else is going to be speaking something negative all the time. So we must be level-headed. And remember that the enemy is out to destroy. Not people, but the enemy is out to destroy us. So, we want to conclude then to resist is to act against him and to stand. 
you know, I've heard so many people say, well, I, I prayed and nothing happened. Or I prayed and that situation remained the same. So I just, I just feel like throwing in the towel. No, he says, resist, resist him, but then stand firm in your faith. And you see, God's timing is not necessarily on our time clock. Most of the time it's not. And he's testing and trying us. Are you still going to believe? Are you going to still believe? So be firm in the faith and be rock solid. Don't bend or give an inch to the enemy. Don't falter. Don't compromise. Be firm in your faith. And as fellow soldiers, this is not a solo sport. This is not a solo sport. It is a game between two teams and we have to decide which team we're on and hang in there with our team, which would be the body of Christ. That's who we're joined with. Those that, excuse me, those who are called as believers in Christ. And we have divine leadership in command. And we are battling a hateful enemy, so we must be alert to his various attacks. The Word of God will tell us about his strategies. And we bond closely to the army, his church, and we depend on his resources, not upon our own. So as we review just what we saw in the beginning, to rise and shine, that means, uh, who's he speaking to? He's talking to those of us who have felt beaten down. When you're laying in that bed, you're in a, the most vulnerable position. Well, we can also be laying down in our spirit man. And so he's saying, arise, spirit man, and shine. He's speaking to those that feel beaten down, those that feel oppressed, and those that are just plain worn out. He's saying, arise and shine. Be enlightened, for your light has come. That is our Messiah has come. Restoration is here, and we need to know it to be true. He's here to bring light into our darkness. So as we pass through the dark valleys, and we might feel abandoned, we might feel hopeless, but he will bring the strength that we need. He lights our ways. So uh, as an enlistee, as we're just talking about today, let's let the Lord, our commander-in-chief, train us to be sober and to be alert so that we'll be overcomers in his army. I invite you to contact me to uh, come, uh, check through our ministry, Jubilee Worship Center at 143 Bluebell Road in Greensboro, 27406. I thank you for those who have contributed to this ministry so that we can continue to bring these programs to you. Our services are 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, and we have a Bible study for men and women on Thursdays at 10 a.m. We invite you to come join us. If Whether you have a church or not, come and visit and find your church home and get in with the army of God. Thank you for joining us for A Time of Jubilee. To contact us, you can write Jubilee Worship Center at 143 Bluebell Road in Greensboro. You can call us 336-272-9910. You can visit our website at HealingMinistriesGreensboro.org or visit our Facebook page. See you next week for a time of Jubilee. The preceding program is paid for by Jubilee Worship Center, Greensboro.